Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Happy Tuesday to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to inform you that when you see articles like this where they say that inflation rose by 6% or 9% or whatever it is, that it's really a lot worse than that. I'm going to explain to you exactly why it is a lot worse than that and why it is that you need to stock up on everything that you need today as soon as possible while your dollars still have some purchasing power because when you're being told that next year I think it was Kellogg's that said that next year they're going to raise their prices by 20 percent that's not to you ladies and gentlemen it's gonna be a lot more than 20 percent to you and I the end consumer let's go over this article really quick and then I'm gonna to explain to you exactly why it is that whenever you see a number here you should probably just about double it all right, so when they tell us that it's 20% that is going up next year, you're probably looking at 40%, if not more than that. All right, so here it says, U.S. producer prices explode to record high in November. And for those of you that don't know what producer prices are, it's the price that the manufacturers pay for their goods, for the raw products. All right, so if they're going up for the manufacturers, you better believe that they're going to be going up for you as well. But will they go up at the same rate for you that they go up for the manufacturers? I would say not, and that's what I'm going to explain to you. After the CPI's rise last week, and for those of you that don't know what CPI means, it's just the Consumer Prices Indices, or Consumer Price Indices. A lot of people in the economic world like to call the CPI the CP lie, because it is the inflation rate that the government is putting out, saying this is how much more it's costing you to live this year than it was last year. Unfortunately, this year's case, it's been this is how much more it's costing you to live this month compared to last year and this month. All right, so now we're looking at it on a monthly basis instead of an annual basis. Anyways, I digress. After CPI's rise last week, which was somehow briefly seen as good, <laughs> uh, seen as good news because it was lower than a wild whisper number, producer prices store up the narrative this morning, printing a record-breaking 9.6% year over year. That means that this time last year, producers were paying 9.6% less than what they were last year for the same raw materials, smashing expectations of 9.2%, which is still high, and well above the 8.6% year-over-year year print of October. So ladies and gentlemen, we are going up every single month. Every single month. And I'm going to explain to you, man, let's get through this because I really want to explain to you why it is that this is going to be a lot worse for the consumer. Both goods and services prices rose with energy and transportation costs being the biggest drivers. Within final demand goods in November, prices for iron and steel scrap rose 10.7%. The indices for gasoline, fresh fruit and melons, fresh and dry vegetables, industrial chemicals, and jet fuel also moved higher. Conversely, prices for diesel fuel decreased by 2.6%. The indices for proposed young chickens and for light motor trucks also fell. Leading the November increase in the index for final demand services, prices for portfolio management advanced 2.9 percent the indices for guest room rental securities brokerage dealing investment advice and related services fuels and lubricants retailing airline passenger service and transportation of freight and mail also moved higher ladies and gentlemen everything is moving higher this is what happens when a fiat currency is almost near its death things start creeping up in price and the inflation or the prices of goods and services is just going to creep up and creep up and creep up they may take a little dip now and then but in the long term they'll just keep creeping up in the macro view or how someone likes to say the bird's eye view when you're looking from from above down below you'll see that it's a line that goes up with little divots but lows up just like the Dow alright just like the Dow if you look if you look at that chart they're gonna keep going up the indices for furnishings wholesaling and for bundled wire tele telecommunications access 
services also decline they say and which those are things that we really don't need which kind of makes sense as to why they're declining and judging by the exploding pipeline for producer prices things are also going to get a lot worse before they get better and that ladies and gentlemen i have to agree with that is the highest ppi intermediate since 1974 and the u.s had mile long lines for gas back in 1974 now i'm not sure if you've heard i've been hearing it all over youtube that uh inflation is now the highest that it's been not in 20 years not in two decades but in 30 years and ladies and gentlemen this is why it's going to be worse than what they're telling us and i'm going to play out a scenario for you okay now, ladies and gentlemen, what you have to understand is, is that we live in a debt-based economy slash a credit-based economy. When a manufacturer or producer makes something that they're going to put out for sale, we live in what it is a debt-based economy, which is what makes the value of our dollars go down because we need more dollars in the system in order for the system not to implode. And adding more dollars to the system is the definition of inflation. And what happens when you have inflation in the monetary supply? It makes the prices of things go up. So in addition to that, we also live in what is a credit economy, meaning that most manufacturers, I won't say all, because I'm sure that some have all the capital they need and don't need to borrow, but most do need to borrow. Most work on credit. So let's take a very simple example and work it all the way through to the shelf, to the consumer, to you and me. Let's say that you buy a loaf of bread for whatever it is. Where does that loaf of bread's life start? It starts at the farmer, right? The farmer has to have land. And more than likely nowadays, most farmers owe money on their land. They have a mortgage on their land. So are they paying interest on that mortgage? More than likely, yes, they are. So now that inflation goes up, let's say inflation goes up to 10% or 9.8% like they're saying for November. Let's keep it simple and say inflation goes up to 10%. Now it's costing that farmer 10% more just to operate, 10% more of his capital just to operate. But that farmer borrows the money to buy the seeds. That farmer borrows the money to fuel his vehicles. The farmer borrows the money to fix his equipment when they break down. So that 10% that the farmer is now paying more than what he or she was paying before, on top of that, you have to add all of the interest payments that they're making above and beyond what it's costing them to make that product now that inflation has gone up. So now the farmer takes his corn he sends his corn or his wheat, let's say wheat berries, all right, because we're doing bread. That farmer takes his wheat berries and he takes it to market. And then they take those wheat berries at market and they sell it to a wholesaler. Now the wholesaler, who is also a business, more than likely operates on credit. The wholesaler is going to take that or the manufacturer, okay, the manufacturer, the company that takes the wheat, turns it into flour. Now they're going to take that turn into flour but it's the same story for them they borrow money to buy the wheat berries from the wholesaler and then they have to borrow money to pay their people that work for them they have to borrow money for energy we 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 live in a credit system everyone is on credit every big business is on credit and credit means that you're going to pay interest so now you take that that uh, manufacturer that turned that wheat into flour, you go ahead and tack on the extra expense that they have onto whatever the farmer had to tack on, and then they take it and they put it in trucks to ship it to someone that's actually going to make bread. Well, guess what? Most truck drivers, I would assume, because I don't know this for a fact, but most truck drivers probably have a mortgage on their truck, all right, or a truck payment. They have to pay for fuel. Where do they put their fuel on? On their credit card. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's how it works up the entire stream until it gets to you. Now, the truck driver is going to have to add a little. They're going to have to charge to transport that flour. And then when it gets to the bread making facility, they are in the same situation. 
So by the time that inflation goes up 10% for producers, by the time that it gets to you, it's going to be double that. So when Kellogg's tells us next year that they're going to have to increase their prices by 20%, you better believe that you're going to be paying a lot more than 20% at the supermarket. Why? Because the supermarket, ladies and gentlemen, they work on credit as well. They don't work on straight cash capital. They work on credit. Every minute that that box of cereal sits on a shelf is costing that supermarket interest. Same thing with a car dealer. Why do you think car dealers want to get rid of their cars as soon as they hit the lot? Because they borrow the money to put those cars on their lot. And they're paying interest on those vehicles, what money they borrow from those vehicles, until after they sell those cars off their lot. So when they say that next year we're going to have inflation in foods of about 20%, which is ridiculous, that's an astronomical price, what they're really telling you is to expect to pay at least 40% more. In my opinion, next year, ladies and gentlemen, I've already gone on record on this. In my opinion, next year, we're going to have anywhere between 50 to 100% inflation on food. So get your food now. Get it now and put it away. If, you, if you're new to prepping or if you just came across this video, take a look at the rest of my videos. I show you how you can put away foods for long term and they will last a very long time. Get those things that you eat and stock up on them in quantity. Unless a person who is calling you a hoarder or who is saying that you shouldn't be buying this because everything's going to be alright, if they don't pay your bills, don't worry about what they say, ladies and gentlemen, because it is you and your children who are going to be going hungry tomorrow if you don't prepare today. And that is the truth. Having said that, I hope that you have a great day. We will see you tomorrow during our live stream, and we'll have a good time there as we always do. Having said that, remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm Alaska Prepper, and I'm out. Ladies and gentlemen, every time that Becky or Eric at Nutrient Survival tell me that they have a lot of return customers, it is not a surprise to me, because I know firsthand that this is the most nutrient-dense survival food in the market, and it tastes great. Many people tell me that this food is too expensive, but compared to what? I have not been able to find another long-term survival food in the market that comes close to matching what Nutrient Survival offers in terms of nutrition. I would say that it's hard to find any food nowadays that are packed with as many nutrients that your body needs and can easily absorb, and that is why I am such a big supporter and advocate of this product. Sure, you can buy cheap calories with almost zero nutrients, or you can buy what I like to call the Cadillac of survival food, which is this. Nutrient Survival is currently offering this AP Essentials Kit until the end of this year for about $141 after you use the AP code at checkout. And ladies and gentlemen, I would never promote this food unless I thought it was the best. So feed your freedom with Nutrient Survival.